Silent Night is the carol that I most often opt to include in the Christmas midnight service at that moment when Christmas Eve tips into Christmas Day. And with this carol and with today's reading, we get to the nub of it, the heart of the story. We hear that line, she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger. All the prophecies we've read are pointing towards and waiting for this moment. And all the drama of angel visitations are laying the foundation one by one for this moment. And then after, all the drama and glories of angels again, a huge choir singing their alleluias across the sky. But in between this moment, a son a baby, wrapped in cloths and laid in a manger. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The focus has narrowed to a single point, a time in history, a place on earth a moment of wonder and love, from which then all things open out again. Many of us, me included, first paired back and now have cancelled our plans for Christmas. Everything is now simpler, smaller, quieter with fewer bright lights, fewer people, fewer distractions, fewer places to hide. There are things we have lost, things we will miss this Christmas, but there are worse places and worse things to do than kneeling metaphorically at that manger, taking time to touch that singular moment of Christ's birth, a small wonder of immense and grace-filled power.
I wonder where within you or around you that place of Christ's birth might be this Christmas? Or where would you like him to bring his redeeming grace? At Christmas Communion, there are some particular words that I use as I distribute bread on Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day. And they form my prayer for you now. The body of Christ is given for you. May Christ be born in you. May Christ be born in you again this Christmas. Amen.